Hannah, a 36-year-old woman and a wife. I lead a pretty lonely life as my husband, Aiden, is in the army. Yes, he's been deployed for quite some time, and let me tell you, military life isn't all about glamorous reunions and tearful farewells. It is about gaining resilience in these in-between moments. Now Aiden is a courageous man with a quiet determination that I truly admire. During one of his calls home, he made an unusual request. Hannah, you should work on improving your relationship with my mom, he suggested. What are you talking about? I asked. You see, Grace hasn't been herself since dad passed away. She feels very lonely, just like you did during my business trip. I've noticed it too. Maybe you and Grace could use each other's company a bit more, spend more time together, Aiden explained. Aiden, please, it's not going to be easy for all of us, I thought. I was well aware that things had been strained between Grace and me since the infamous wedding incident, or should I say the wine incident? Let me provide a bit of context. Our few dates back to my wedding day. Picture the stress of planning, coordinating, and trying to keep my composure so I didn't come across as a complete lunatic, which deep down I certainly wasn't. I was attempting to relax before taking the plunge into marital bliss when Grace, my dear mother-in-law, seemed determined to push my buttons. She knew how to do it, having honed her skill to perfection. On that very day, she had an agenda, and it wasn't subtle at all. Her aim was to inject a bit of chaos into my life. Small, sneaky acts were her forte. I was preparing and eager to savor every moment before the solemn occasion when Grace's, with a grin that could only be described as devious, accidentally spilled red wine all over my pristine white wedding dress. Yes, red wine on a white dress. It was like a nightmare unfolding in slow motion. Of course, she claimed it was an accident attributing it to her clumsy fingers and the nervousness of her baby growing up and getting married. But I knew better. That mischievous twinkle in her eyes gave her away. She did it on purpose. From that moment on, our relationship took a nosedive. It was as if a layer of trust had been peeled away, revealing the simmering tension beneath the surface. Every subsequent encounter was laden with passive-aggressive comments and thinly-veiled sarcasm. What used to be friendly exchanges had turned into a battlefield of snide remarks. It was utterly exhausting, to say the least. So naturally, I distanced myself from the situation. I had no interest in engaging in a feud, but because of my love for Aiden and the hurt in his voice, I reluctantly agreed to try and mend our strained relationship. I couldn't help myself. I just felt an overwhelming sense of sympathy for him. He'd been through so much trouble during his service. All that grueling training and sleepless nights. I knew I owed it to him, at the very least, to make an effort. Besides, it had been several years, and I hoped that Grace had done some growing up in the meantime. Well, if it's important to you, I'm willing to give it a shot. After all, I'm all about supporting each other, I said. That's my girl. I know it won't be easy, especially given your history, but who knows? Maybe you'll find you have more in common than you think, he replied. I'll keep an open mind, I promise. But just so you know, if she tries to pull any wine-spilling antics again, I'll have a serious talk with her. No more sabotage attempts, I swear, I promised. All right then, let's do this for you, for us, and even for Grace, he said and continued. Thanks, Hannah. It means a lot to me, and I promise I'll make it up to you when I'm back. After Aiden and I had our heartfelt conversation about reconnecting with his mother... I plucked up the courage to contact Grace. I knew it wouldn't be a walk in the park given our history, but I was determined to make an effort for the sake of my husband and the overall family atmosphere. To my dismay, Grace's response was as passive-aggressive as I had expected. Aiden had a stern talk with me about my treatment of you, she admitted reluctantly. I'll try to tolerate you more, the mother-in-law added. The emphasis on the word try made it clear that this wasn't going to be a smooth journey, so we cautiously started spending more time together. It was a rocky start with tension so thick you could practically cut it with a knife. However, gradually, we began finding common ground, bonding over old family stories and shared experiences. Things were bearable, at least for a while, but then Old Grace started showing her true colors again. It began subtly. Those little jabs and digs that seemed to go unnoticed by everyone but me. A snide comment here. A passive-aggressive remark there. It was like a scene out of a high school drama. It was infuriating. It seemed like she couldn't help herself, 
and it was driving me to the brink of sanity. Months passed, and my frustration continued to mount. I was tired of pretending to be the nice girl who was trying so hard to make things work. I had had enough of the fake smiles and insincere conversations. I couldn't ignore the glaring issue any longer, no matter how uncomfortable it might be. So one day, I mustered my courage and made the decision to address Grace about her behavior. We were at her place, sipping on some tea that seemed more bitter than usual. As I searched for the right words, my heart raced a mile a minute. Eventually, I blurted out, Grace, I can't ignore the tension between us any longer. I thought we were making progress, but these constant jabs and digs are getting to me. Grace gazed at me with her practiced innocence, but I wasn't falling for it this time. I took a deep breath, my frustration turning into determination and continued, you know exactly what I mean. Honestly, I'm tired of pretending. If we're going to make this work, we need to have an honest conversation. That's when things took a turn for the worse. Our conversation escalated into a full-blown argument, with each word growing more heated than the last. Our voices became louder, and it felt as though the tension in the room was suffocating me. I was anxiously awaiting my nosy neighbor to call the police, thinking a domestic dispute was unfolding. As the shouting persisted, it struck me how deep-seated the resentment truly was. This wasn't merely about a spilled glass of wine on my wedding dress anymore. It was about years of misunderstandings, miscommunications, and a reservoir of pent-up anger. In that moment, I realized that there was no going back to the way things were. Eventually, our argument subsided, leaving the room heavy with the weight of our words. I left Grace's place that day feeling drained but strangely liberated. We had finally let it all out, and while our exchange might not have been graceful or eloquent, it was undeniably real. In the aftermath, a mix of emotions washed over me, relief, sadness, and an oddly enlightening clarity. It became apparent that certain wounds ran too deep to heal with just a few tea sessions and polite conversations. After that tense argument with Grace, I was deep in thought, sitting in my living room, the weight of all that had transpired hanging heavily in the air. I had grown weary, fed up with the ceaseless tension and bickering. It felt as if the walls of our large house were closing in on me, suffocating me with the burden of memories and unresolved issues. As the days passed, I couldn't shake the overwhelming sense of loneliness that had taken up residence in every nook of our rented home. Aiden was still dutifully serving his deployment miles away, making the house feel emptier than ever. It served as a stark reminder of how much I missed him and how vast the distance between us had become. On top of the fallout with my mother-in-law, I felt even more isolated. I grew tired of constantly oscillating between being too far from those I loved and too close to those I didn't. So the notion of moving began to take root in my mind. Downsizing to a smaller place felt like a breath of fresh air. It wasn't solely about saving money, although that was undoubtedly a welcome benefit. The idea was to create a more manageable, cozy space that, most importantly, would be free from the constant anxiety caused by Grace. During one of our video calls, I broached the subject with Aiden. Surprisingly, he was quite receptive to it. At that point, I hadn't mentioned the conflict with Grace. Instead, I focused on the potential financial relief the move could provide us. But then, in his characteristically perceptive manner, he asked the question I had been avoiding. Hey babe, yes, part of me can't help but think that this also has something to do with a certain someone. Did you and my mom have another clash? Is she connected to your desire to move? He asked. I let out a sigh, feeling a mix of frustration and relief that he had brought it up. Yeah, it's partly about her, Aiden. I tried, really, I did, but she's just so confrontational, you know? Every conversation with her feels like a battle, and I've reached my limit, I replied. Aiden nodded sympathetically on the screen. I understand, Hannah. You've made genuine efforts to bridge that gap, but if it's causing you this much stress, maybe it's time to prioritize your own well-being. I genuinely don't understand why my mom has such a strong aversion to you. I'll do what I can, but my hands are tied up here. I love you, and I want to support you as much as I can. If that means moving, then so be it, he concluded. And there it was, his unwavering support and understanding, just as I had come to expect from him.
It wasn't about fleeing from the issue, but rather finding a solution that allowed both of us to breathe a bit easier. His words reassured me that it was okay to put myself first and seek a healthier environment where I could flourish without constantly feeling on edge. As our conversation continued, I felt a renewed sense of determination. Moving wouldn't magically solve all our problems, but it would be a step toward reclaiming my peace of mind. With Aiden by my side, even though he was miles away, I felt empowered to make decisions that would lead us to a more positive and fulfilling future. As I surveyed our living room, I allowed myself to imagine the possibilities of starting anew in a cozier space, one unburdened by the ghosts of unresolved conflicts. I was ready to take that leap, to create a haven where Aiden and I could find solace in each other's presence without the constant weight of the negativity that had marred our relationship with Grace. Fast forwarding about three months, I was comfortably settled into my new stylish apartment. It had truly been a game changer, and the feeling of liberation from the old place with its negative energy was beyond compare. My 26th birthday was swiftly approaching, and I was filled with excitement. This would mark my first celebration in my new digs, and I was determined to make it memorable. Traditionally, I'd vacate my home the night before the party, allowing my friends and family to decorate it as a surprise. However, this year called for something different. Having such a small apartment meant that I couldn't host a grand party. Instead, my friends were already there, and we were kickstarting the festivities before our early flight the next day. It was a pre-trip hangout, crashing at my place before jetting off together. Laughter and lively chatter filled the living room as we geared up for our adventure. But of course, life has its way of introducing change. Amidst all the excitement, my phone buzzed with a text from Grace. Intrigued, I checked it out and the message read, Call me now, something important to talk about. The message was concise and urgent, leaving me wondering what was happening. I discreetly separated from the group and made my way to my bedroom to call Grace. My heart raced with curiosity and concern. Hello, Grace. What's going on? I asked. I've had enough of your behavior, Hannah. What the hell is wrong with you? Her response was abrasive and direct. Excuse me? I retorted. You heard me. What's your problem? Why do you insist on trying to make my son hate me? She persisted. Oh, I see. You're upset because I told your son the truth, I replied, finding her accusation absurd. What truth? She wondered. You're being ridiculous, Grace. I don't have time to deal with you. I'm fed up with your bitterness. I don't care that you're unhappy. Just leave me alone and let me enjoy my birthday, I finished. Unable to bear it, she blurted out. Speaking of that... I wanted to inform you that you won't be enjoying your birthday this year. You should thank me for the heads up. Confused and alarmed, I demanded, what the hell are you talking about? Well, after not receiving an invitation this year, I felt a bit resentful, so I took it upon myself to contribute in my own way to make your birthday special. You see, I couldn't wait any longer. I broke into your home and destroyed everything. All the decorations, the furniture, everything is shattered. Come to think of it, I did you a favor because your friends did a terrible job at decorating this year. Honestly, it looked like a completely different person was living in that house, she stated with a smirk. My jaw dropped, shocked by Grace's audacious actions. I took a deep breath, my silence stretching out as I imagined Grace smirking on the other end of the line. Finally, she said, Oh, it looks like I did my job and gave the birthday girl a great surprise. Happy birthday, Hannah. Hope you have a blast. I couldn't help but burst into laughter, which seemed to infuriate Grace. Why are you laughing? What's so funny? You should be in tears right now, she puzzled. I managed to regain my composure. Oh, Grace, you're quite the fool, I continued to giggle. Excuse me, she said in a confused voice. You think you're so clever, don't you? Well, I'll admit one thing. You did manage to surprise me, that's for sure. I had no idea you could be so despicable. But you've made a colossal mistake, my dear, I continued. Oh, yeah? What's that? Grace demanded. That wasn't my house, I added. Have you lost your mind or something? She questioned, shocked. No, Grace, but you soon will, once you realize you just broke into someone else's house and vandalized it, I uttered. I proceeded to reveal to Grace that I had moved three months ago. It was an unexpected revelation for her. 
The old house was history, replaced by a new occupant, Sheriff Adam, who was new to the area and planning to move in with his family. I had met him a couple of times and could already tell he was one of those genuinely nice guys focused on getting his new place ready for his family. As I explained all this to Grace, I sensed her mood changing. Panic began to set in, and she was starting to freak out. She had just realized that she had messed with the wrong person in a big way. Vandalizing an ordinary home was one thing, but taking on the new sheriff's house was a whole different level of audacity. I heard her shiver on the other end of the line, and I knew she was beginning to grasp the magnitude of her actions. Her voice trembled as she asked, Oh my God, Hannah, what have I done? I couldn't help but let out a chuckle, though it wasn't a joyful one. Well, well, Grace, you decided to mess with the sheriff's home. You're on your own with this one. I smirked. She began to cry and panic, begging me to help her fix the situation. She didn't even apologize for attempting to vandalize my home. She wanted me to reach out to the sheriff and tell him it was all a big misunderstanding. But seriously, this was just too much. Grace was facing the repercussions of her actions, and I had no intention of coming to her rescue. I had to stifle a laugh as she sobbed over the phone, lamenting that her life was ruined. I didn't feel an ounce of sympathy for her, not even a tiny bit. She had played these games for years, and now it was time for her to reckon with the consequences. To me, it looked like justice was served. Please, please help me, she pleaded desperately. I simply shook my head, even though she couldn't see it. Sorry, Grace. You got yourself into this mess, and I suggest you figure your way out. I won't be part of it. I will say, though, you've given me the best birthday present. I ended the call and let out a sigh of relief. Finally, I was done with Grace and her drama. It was time to move forward and live my life without the constant drag of her negativity. As I glanced around my cozy new apartment, I knew I had made the right choice in leaving the old place behind. The next day marked the beginning of my vacation with my friends. We were ready for fun and adventure, and I was determined to leave Grace's troubles far behind us. Throughout the trip, I ignored all of her calls. I had made up my mind that I was finished with her and her toxic behavior. During a break, I managed to reach my husband, Aiden, and filled him in on everything that had transpired with Grace. Understandably, he was upset with his mother for her absurd behavior. It seemed like she had finally crossed a line too far, and he was relieved that she was experiencing the consequences of her actions. While my friends and I enjoyed our vacation, I continued to receive updates from friends and acquaintances back home. They filled me in on Grace's predicament. It turned out that after all her wild antics, she had landed herself in a jail cell. The irony of it all was that she had no one to bail her out. It was like the universe was serving her a hefty dose of karma. I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction hearing about Grace's situation. For so long, she had acted as if she could do as she pleased without facing any consequences. But now she was dealing with the consequences all on her own having pushed away everyone who might have been willing to help her. While I was enjoying the sunshine with my friends, Grace found herself confined to a jail cell with no one to turn to. It felt as if a heavy burden had been lifted from my shoulders. I relished the knowledge that I was now free from her toxic influence, no longer shackled by her manipulations and hurtful actions. As my vacation drew to a close, I returned home with a sense of renewal and refreshment. The chapter of my life involving Grace was firmly closed, and I was eager to move forward without her. It was an empowering sensation, knowing that I had taken charge of my own happiness and left behind the negativity that had held me back for far too long. Life continued to progress, and I dedicated myself to cultivating positive relationships and surrounding myself with people who genuinely cared about me. Aiden and I grew stronger than ever, united in our commitment to creating a happy and healthy life together. As for Grace, she had ultimately reaped what she had sown, and it was a very important lesson that will remain in her memory for a long time.